and providing them with the social capital that they needed. It created loyalty, it created a mystique, it created interest, and it provided a fantastic cover for them. It was totally realistic. When you, when you see these guys and say, well, they're part of the music industry, they look the part, they act the part, they understand the culture of the hip-hop lifestyle. It's not like they were trying to open up, you know, a bunch of uh, McDonald's or something like that. And this BMF entertainment thing is, is more than just a regular label production, some niggas doing music or just some street niggas doing this is really all about going state to state and linking up motherfuckers from the streets, man, from all over. No matter where you from, no matter what you look like, how fat you are, or whatever. You know, niggas that got a little money and a lot of sense, man, we looking for to start making some of these black dollars happen. One of the big features Biggie so proclaimed the legacies was that he unified gangs from all over the country. Crips, Bloods, GDs, VPs. They all stood together underneath his black flag. And we got all type of niggas around here. It's short niggas, tall niggas, bald niggas, light skin, dark skin, braids, dreads, fat, whatever you want. We do it all. We don't discriminate. Matter of fact, after you leave here, you end up getting your teeth on something and coming up with something better. You know what I'm saying? Like a new car, new house, maybe kids get to go to school, private school, pay for courtesy of the mob. You know what I'm saying? We pay. You know, that's simple. A lot of niggas don't like to spend their money. We love to spend our money. We can't take none of this shit with us. This phenomenon is a testament to how BMF grew. Most guys who would want to establish a drug empire, they're going to go off of the stereotype of what you believe you have to do to get there. And part of that is the violence. With daily images of cartel-related bloodshed being broadcast from the southern borders and gang violence running rampant in our own cities, we have an immediate prejudice that the drug trade goes hand-in-hand -hand with violence. Meech and Terry took a different approach to extend their reach. Upon entering new territories, they presented themselves as businessmen. And through diplomacy, they created alliances with existing criminal entities. They cut their eye on the ball. Because, you know, you get enough bodies laying around and law enforcement attention is going to come your way is probably faster than when there's not that type of activity in a way that's what made them so successful because they never engage in a lot of violence so that the attention was never drawn to them in the way that it might be to another group of people as much as meach was a natural negotiator the bottom line was probably the most persuasive element in BMF's success. With their vast supply, the brothers offered kilos of coke for only 17 grand, two to three thousand dollars less than their competitors. I 
Call of Duty, wrong phone. Huh? Wrong phone, what up, though? My new check, what's one? The last one I got? The new check. Which one's the phone that I get? Oh, yeah, I still got it. No, he ain't give it to me. He said he couldn't get a hold of the dog or some bullshit, and I had to leave. Right, you got the old phone? Yeah. Alright, you got it on you? Yeah, I ain't got no time on the day. You told me to burn off the sun. Often while we were intercepting Terry talking on a particular phone, he would be using uh, push-to-talk phones in the background, having other conversations. So he, he had multiple phones going at any one time and then of course had a reserve of phones for him and his organization members so about the best thing we could do was is terry would transition from one phone to another we could try to keep pace and spin to the next phone and we successfully did that with about three of terry's phones DEA sat back and listened for five months as Terry laid out the foundations of their investigation. It is from this monitoring that we're able to find out information about the participants or co-conspirators. We're also able to determine whether or not there is any drug activity taking place. We were able to listen to Terry direct the driver to take some kilograms of coke down to Louisville, Kentucky for distribution. That aided us in conducting a traffic stop and a season 10. Gunpowder behind each shot. <laughs> it's that shit that's gonna blow you about four feet back, nigga. I only got six of these shots. I only need one. As more and more attention was being brought upon the organization, Meech became openly defiant in believing his hip-hop company could blur the line between art and reality. Probably no secret to them that we were after them. They thought they were untouchable. And they were taunting us. Blue, man, this man is interfering with my business. You need to get down here and talk to this man. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to count this man. I don't know why somebody let him in the room to see what's going on anyway, man. In 2004, he even commissioned billboards in Atlanta claiming... The world was BMFs, a throwback to Scarface's mantra. The billboards was when it was enough was enough. That billboard was always a bone of contention with the district attorney himself. Uh, the fact that they could just be so out there, and he was very determined, and so he took the handcuffs off of us. Meech was put under constant surveillance, and an Atlanta-based task force was assigned to topple the family. They used similar strategies of the Detroit DEA and got a wiretap on a low-level dealer. Once the wires were running, they were manned 24-7. I don't believe that we ever came off of them. And then a lot of the agents, Chip Cook, Mike Hannon, these guys would come in when they weren't scheduled. Just to go back through and review, they put the case together. Their diligence paid off, and they were able to spin up several times all the way up to a high-level BMF manager favored by Big Meech himself. They would watch the wire on a... The song is King 
So the song is King Saul, the chief of Jerusalem. Lapete lapete sa le busuku lapete lapete fi basi me mashi me lapete la paketa le bute le bute fi busuku le le bute le basi bute masi bute paketa le busuku te bute fe. Pour ça, vous te faites. Mon paquet en l'air, vous te crêtez pour te. Crêtez pour tout ça. Un bousse pour te. Bousse pour te. Pour ça, vous faites. Bousse pour n'aller chez toi. Baguette en l'air, vous te marchez pour quoi. Basse pour n'aller ses doigts. Pour l'air, vous te quoi. Balle tout te. Basse pour m'aller mes mois. Malé menoir, valé pour vie, valé pour malé pour d'âme, pour l'air où te fait, pour ça où te fait, bousse pour te, pour te où te fait, bousse pour me, l'air où te fait, pour l'air où te fait, mousse pour ce pour te, l'air où te fait, passe pour te, pour te fait, passe pour te, pour te, l'air où te fait, bousse pour te. Bousse pour fi, marche pe la, marche pour te, le bout te fait, basse pour le bout te wa, marche ve la, le bout te marche pe ta, baguette le bout te wa, wa, le bout te fi, bousse pour ti, le bout te le bout te fi pour le le bout te fi, bousse mona, marche pour le bout te danse, baguette le bout te fait. Marche pour le goût te danser, ou tellement on veut ou te rancer, n'est va ou penser, pour sou pour manser, pour sou pour conser, qu'on s'en la, joue ma se la pour toi, vie et dans ce poté pour te pour marche ma se soi, qu'on soube, ve marche toi. Pour te pour danser, pour les mes filles causer, où ça me m'a même monté, pour les mes mots me vote, par les mes c'est me mosse, et mi est un me causer, pour marcher la me faute, pour ça faire, vous soutenez pour les pour te pour les coumé, pour ça ou te ou te vers pour te Où c'est l'égva pour marcher moi? Qu'on s'écoute en mou sous ma chéta.